Excerpt from local shit paper. Ominous unknown killer still at large. After weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous unknown killer is still on the rise for reals. After little evidence has been found, a little pimp states that he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely dropped some lyrics to his story. I had a funky ass bad trip and I raised up up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I saw that for some reason the window was open, even though I remember it being closed before I went to bed. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. I got up and shut it once more. I got up and shut it once more, for real. Afterwards, I simply crawled underneath my covers and tried to go back to chill. That's when I got a strange feeling like some motherfucker's watching my dirty ass. I looked up and nearly jumped out of my bed. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. And there, up in the little ray of light. Illumination from between my curtains was a pair of two eyes. These weren't regular eyes. They were dark, ominous eyes. They were bordered up in black and just plain up terrified my dirty ass. That's when I saw his crazy ass grill for reals. All long, horrendous smile that done crooked up every last motherfucking afro on my body stand up. The figure stood there, watching my dirty ass. Finally, after what the fuck seemed like forever, he hollered for reals, a simple phrase, yo, but hollered up in the way only a mad player could speak. Dude hollered, Go. To. Sleep. Know what I'm saying, biatch? I lit up a scream. That's what the fuck busted his ass in my dirty ass, yo. Dude pulled up a knife aimed at my heart, yo. Dude jumped on top of my bed. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. I fought his ass back. I kicked, I punched, I rolled around trying to knock his ass off my dirty ass. And that's when my dad bust in. I ain't talking about chick... I ain't talking about chicken gravy, bitch. That player threw the knife. It went the fuck into my dad's shoulder. The player probably would have finished his ass off if it hadn't been the neighbors had alerted the 5-0. They drove the fuck into the parking lot and ran towards the... Ran towards the dope. The player turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash like glass breaking for reals. As I came out of my room, I saw the window th that was pointed towards the back of my doggy den was broken. I ain't talking about chicken and gravy, bitch. I looked up to peep his ass, vanish the fuck into the distizzle. I can rap one thing. I'll never forget that face. Those cold, evil eyes. That psychotic smile. They will never leave my head. Popo is still on the lookout for this man. I ain't talking about chicken and gravy, bitch. If you peep every last motherfucking motherfucker that fits the description up in this dis story, please contact your local 5-0 department. Jeff and his wild little gang had just moved the fuck into a freshly smoked up hood. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. His dad had been got- his dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it'd be dopest to live up in one of them fancy hoods. Jeff and his little brother Lou couldn't diss though, for reals. A new mo better house. That was not to love, bitch. As they was getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Yo, motherfucker, her ass hollered. I be Barbara. I live across the street from your thug out ass. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and to introduce my son. Bitch turns around and calls her little hustle over. Bizizzly, these are our freshly smoked up neighbors. Bizizzly hollered high and ran back to play in the yard. Well, hollered Jeff's mom, I be Margaret, and this my homeboy Peter, and this my two sons, Jeff and Luke. They each introduced themselves, and then Barbara invited them to their son's birthday party. Jeff and his brother was about to object when when they mother hollered that they'd love to. When Jeff and his wild little gang is done packing, Jeff went up to his crazy ass mama. Mom, why did you invite our asses to some kid's party, bitch? If you hadn't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff, hollered his crazy ass mother, our thugged out asses just moved in here. Our crazy ass asses want to spend time with our neighbors. Now, we're going to that party, and that's final. 
Jeff started to rap, yo, but stopped his dirty ass, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his crazy ass mama hollered something, it was final, yo. Dude strutted up to his banging room and plopped down on his bed. Y'all know that shit. Dude sat there looking at his ceiling when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, yo, but a weird feeling, yo. Dude dismissed it as just some random feeling, yo. Dude heard his crazy ass mother calling his ass down to get his stuff, and he strutted down to get that shit. The next day, Jeff strutted downstairs to get breakfast and got locked and loaded for school for reals. As he sat down there smoking his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time it was stronger. It gave his ass a slight tugging pain, yo, but once again, he dismissed it for reals. And he and Lou finished breakfast. They strutted down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, and then all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jump up in surprise. Yo, what the fuck? The kid landed and turned back at him, yo. Dude kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hand. The kid seemed to be about 12, one year littler than Jeff, yo. Dude wears Aeropostle hoodie and ripped blue jeans. Well, well, well. It looks like our crazy ass asses got some freshly smoked up meat. And suddenly two other little players rocked up. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. And one was super skinny and the other was huge. Well, since y'all asses is freshly smoked up here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there's Keith. Jeff and Lou looked up and the skinny kid. Dude had a thugged out dopey grill you'd expect a sidekick to have. And he be straight Troy. They looked over all up in the fat kid. Talk on some tub of lard. Don't know that shit. This kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. And I how the straight up original gangster kid am Randy. Now, for all the little players up in this hood, there'd be a little small price of bus fare if you catch my drift. Lou stood up, locked and loaded to punch the lights out of the kid's eyes when one of his wild little players pulled a knife out of his motherfucking ass. I'd hope that you'd be more cooperative, yo. But it seems our crazy ass asses must do things the hard way. The kid strutted up to Lou and took out his wallet out of his thugged out little pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. I ain't talking about chicken and gravy, bitch. Now, it was it was truly strong, a funky ass burning sensation. I ain't talking about chicken and gravy, bitch. Dude stood up, yo, but Lou gestured his ass to sit down. Jeff ignored his ass and strutted up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give back my bro's wallet or else. Randy put the wallet up to his thugged out little pocket and pulled out his knife. Oh bitch, and what the fuck you gonna do? Just as he finished his sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nosezzle for reals, and Randy reached for his wild little face, and Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke that shit. Randy screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, yo, but Jeff was too quick, yo. Dude threw Randy to the ground. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. Keith lashed out at his ass, but Jeff ducked and stabbed his ass up in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground screaming, and Troy rushed his ass too, yo, but Jeff didn't even need the knife, yo. Dude just punched Troy straight up in the stomach, and Troy went down. I ain't talking about chicken and gravy, bitch, for reals. As he fell, he puked all over. And Lou could do not a goddamn thing, but just look up in amazement at Jeff. Jeff. How'd your slick ass? That was Ollie Hollard. They saw the bus coming. They knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. Right back up to your mother, right back up in your motherfucking ass. So they just started hustling as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over Randy and the others for reals. Jeff and Lou juiced it up at the school. They didn't dare tell what what the fuck happened. All they did was sit and listen. I ain't talking about chick chicken and gravy. Lou just thought of that as his brother beating up a gang banging few little players, yo, but Jeff knew it was Mo. Put your motherfucking choppers up if you feel this. It was something scary for reals. And he got that feeling he felt how the fuck banging it was. The urge to just hurt some motherfuckers, yo. 
Dude didn't like how the fuck it sounded, yo, but he couldn't help feeling aight, yo. Dude felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entire dizzle of school. Even as he strutted home because of the whole motherfucking thing near the bus stop, how the fuck now he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore. He felt aight. When he got home, his thugged out little motherfuckers axed his ass how the fuck his fucking little dizzle was and he hollered up in a somewhat ominous voice. It was a straight up dope day. Next morning, he heard a knock at the little wild front door, yo. Dude strutted down to find two 5 officers up in the door. His crazy ass motherfucker looking back at his ass with a stupid pissed look. Jeff, these officers tell my crazy ass that you beat down three kids, that this wasn't a regular fight, and that they were stabbed. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. Stabbed, son. Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his crazy ass motherfucker that it was true. Mom, they was the ones whose ass pulled the knives on my crazy ass and Lou. Son, hollered one of the cops. Our thugged out asses found three kids, two stabbed, one having a funky ass bruise on his stomach, and our crazy ass asses had witness, witnesses proven that you fled the scene. Now, what the fuck did that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use, yo. Dude could say his little ass and Lou had been beat down, yo, but then there was no proof that it wasn't them whose ass beat down first. They couldn't say that they wasn't fleeting, cause truth be busted some lyrics that they were. Right back up in your motherfucking asses so Jeff couldn't defend his dirty ass and Lou. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it. Since it had been his ass whose ass beat up all those kids. Sir, that shit, it was my dirty ass. I was the one whose ass beat up those kids. Lou tried to hold me, Lou tried to hold my crazy ass back, yo, but he couldn't quit my dirty ass. The cop looked at his thugged out little partner and they both nodded. Little kid, looks like a year up in juvie. Wait, says Lou, for show. They all looked up to peep at his ass holding a knife. The officers pulled glocks and they locked on him. It was me. I beat up those little punks, yo. Have the marks to prove that shit. Dude lifted up his sleeve to reveal cuts and bruises as if he was up in a struggle. Son, just put down the knife, hollered the officer, and Lou held the knife and dropped it to the ground. Dude put his hands up, strutted over to the cops. No, Lou, it was me, motherfucker, I did it. Jeff had tears hustling down his little wild little face. Huh, skanky bro, trying to take the blame for what the fuck I did. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker, well, take my crazy ass away. And the 5 led Lou up to the patrol car. Lou, tell him it was me, motherfucker. Tell him, motherfucker, it was, I was the one whose ass beat up them kids. Jeff's mother put her hands on his shoulder. Jeff, please, you ain't gots to lie. I thugged out asses, no, it's Lou, you can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the cops hoped he speeds off with Lou inside for reals. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulls the fuck into the driveway, seeing Jeff's grill and showing something was wrong. Son, little hustler, what the fuck is it? Jeff couldn't answer, yo. His vocal cords were strained from busting up. Instead, Jeff's mother strutted his wild little daddy inside to break the bad shizzle to his ass. After an hour or so, Jeff strutted back up to the house, seeing that his thugged out little motherfucker mother fathers were both shocked sad and pissed the fuck off dude couldn't peep him yo dude couldn't peep how the fuck they thought of Lou when it was his wild little fault yo dude just went to chill trying to get the whole motherfucking thing off his crazy ass mind two days went by with no word from Lou at JDC no players to ride with Nothing but sad nizzle and guilt. That's until Saturday, when Jeff is raised up by his crazy-ass mother with all right sunny face. 
Jeff, it's the day. Her ass hollered as her ass opened the curtains and let light flood the fuck into the banging room. Hmm. What? What's to dizzle? Asked Jeff as he stirs awake. Why, it's Bazizzly's party! Dude was now straight up awake. Mom, your ass is clowning, right, bitch? You ass don't expect my crazy ass to go to that kid's jam after... There was a long ass pause. Jeff, our crazy ass asses both know what the fuck happened. I be thinking this jam could be the motherfucking thing that brightens up the past few days. Now get dressed. And Jeff's mother strutted out of the room and downstairs to get locked and loaded for the motherfucking a her motherfucking ass, yo. Dude forgot his dirty ass to get up. Dude fought his dirty ass to get up, yo. Dude picked up a ru random hoodie and pair of jeans and strutted downstairs, yo. Dude saw his crazy ass mother and daddy all dressed up. His crazy ass mother up in a thuggin' out dress. His wild little daddy up in a suit, yo. Dude thought, why they ever wear such fancy threads to a kid's party? Son? Son? Is that all you're gonna wear? Hollered Jeff's mama. Better than busting up too much, he hollered. His mama pushed down the feeling to yell at his ass and hit it with a smile. Now, Jeff, our crazy ass asses may be head overdressed, yo, but this is how the fuck you go if you want to make an impression, hollered his wild little father. Jeff grunted and went back up to his banging room. I ain't got any fancy clothes, he yelled down the stairs. Just pick something, called his crazy ass mother, yo. Dude looked around up in his closet, what the fuck he would call fancy, yo. Dude found a pair of black dressed baggy ass pants he had for some special occasion and an undershirt, yo. Dude couldn't find a hoodie to go with it though. Dude looked around, found an old striped and patterned shirts, none of which goes with dress pants. Then he found a white hoodie. Put it on. You're busting that? They both hollered. His mother looked at her watch. Oh no! Time to chisel. Let's. Let's just go. Bitch hollered as her bitch hollered as her ass herded Jeff and his wild little daddy up in the door. They crossed the street over to Barbara and Bazizzly's house. They knocked on the door, and at it rocked up Barbara, just like his thugged out little motherfuckers, way overdressed. Y'all know that shit. As they strutted inside, all Jeff could peep was adults, no kids. The little players up in the yard. Jeff, how the fuck about you go hook up a shitload of them? Hollered Barbara. Jeff strutted outside of the yard full of kids. They was hustling around in weird cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic glocks, yo. Dude might as well have been standing up in a Toys R Us. <clears throat> Suddenly, a kid came up to his ass, handed his ass a toy glock and hat. Hey, wanna play? He hollered. Uh, no kid. Y'all know that shit. I, I be too old school for this shit. The kid looked at his ass with that weird puppy dog face. Please? Hollered the kid. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. Fine, hollered Jeff, yo. Dude put on the bass bizzle cap and started to pretend to blast up all these little players for real. At first he thought it was straight up ridiculous, yo, but then he started to motherfucking have fun. He might not have been super deaf, yo, but he was but it was a straight up original gangster time, so he'd done something to take his crazy ass mind off Lou for show. Right back up in your motherfucking ass. So he played with the little players for a while until he heard a noise for reals. A weird rolling noise. Then it hit his motherfucking ass. Randy, Troy, and Keith all jumped over the fence on skateboards. Jeff dropped the fake Glock and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with his funky ass burning hatred. Yo, motherfucker. Jeff, is it? He hollered. Our thugged out asses have some unfinished bidizness. Jeff saw his bruised nose. I be thinking we even. I ain't talking about chicks and chickens and gravy, bitch. I beat the crap out of you, and you get my brother busted to JDC. Randy got a super pissed look on his wild fucking eyes. 
Oh no. I don't go for even. I go for balling. Yo ass may have kicked our asses. That one dizzle, yo. But not to dizzle. As he hollered that, Randy rushed at Jeff. They both fell to the ground. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. Randy punched Jeff up in his nose, and Jeff grabbed his ass by the ears and head butted him. Head butted his motherfucking ass. Jeff pushed Randy off his ass and both rose to their feet. Kids was beatboxing and motherfuckers was hustling out of the house. Troy and Randy both pulled Glocks out of their pockets. No one interrupts and guts will fly. They hollered. Randy pulled a knife on Jeff and stabbed it in the motherfucker in the shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. And Randy started kicking his ass up in the grills for real. And after three kicks, Jeff grabbed his wild little foot and twisted it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Y'all know that shit. Jeff stood up and strutted toward the back door. Troy grabbed his motherfucking ass. Need some help. Dude picked Jeff up by the back of the collar, throws his ass all up on the patio door for real. As Jeff tries to stand, he's kicked down to the ground. Y'all know that shit. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts coughing up blood. Come on, Jeff. Fight me. Dude picks Jeff up and throws his ass the fuck into the kitchen. I ain't talking about chicken. Randy sees a funky ass 40 of vodka on the counter, smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! Throws Jeff back into the fuck into the living room. Come on, Jeff. Peep me. Jeff glizzles up. His wild little grin riddled with blood. Y'all know that shit. I was the one whose ass got your brother busted to JDC, motherfucker. Now your ass is gonna sit here and let his ass rot up in there for a year, motherfucker? Your ass should be ashamed. Jeff starts to get up. Oh, finally, motherfucker, you stand and fight. Jeff is now to his wild little feet. Blood and vodka on his wild little face. Once again, he gets that strange feeling. The one up in which he ain't motherfucking felt for a while. Finally, yo. Dude, straight up. Randy says as he runs at Jeff. That's when it happens. Right back up in your motherfucking ass. Something inside Jeff snaps, yo. He's... His psyche is destroyed, all rationizzle thinking is gone. All he can do is bust a cap up and yell. Dude punches his ass straight in the heart. Dude, the punch causes Randy's heart to quit for reals. And Randy gasps for breath, and Jeff just hammers down on the motherfucking ass. Punch after punch. Blood gushes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath. He dies. Everyone's looking at Jeff now. I mean? The motherfucker that busted up in this bitch kid, even Troy and Keith, for reals. Although they easily break from their gaze and point their glocks at Jeff. Jeff sees the glocks trained on his ass, runs for the stairs for reals. As he runs, Troy and Keith let up fire on him, each blast missing. And Jeff runs up the stairs, yo. Dude hears Troy and Keith follow up behind him. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. As they let up, they finally run the bullets. Jeff ducks the fuck into the bathroom, yo. Dude grabs a towel rack, rips it off the wall. Troy and Keith race up, knives ready, and Troy swings his knife at Jeff, whose ass backs away, and bangs the towel rack the fuck into Troy's face. Troy goes down hard, and now all that's left is, is Keith, yo. Dude is more agile than Troy, though. He ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack, yo. Dude drops the knife and grabs Jeff by the neck, yo. Dude pushes his ass the fuck into the wall for reals. Motherfucking thing of bleach fell down on top of his ass from the top shelf. Burnt both of them. They both started to scream and Jeff wiped the wild little fucking eyes as the dopest as he could. Y'all know that shit. Dude pulled back and towel rack swung and straight the fuck into Keith's head. As he lay there bleeding to dirt nap. Lit up an ominous smile. What's so funny, asked Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter, switched it on. What's funny, he hollered, is that your ass is covered in bleach and brew. Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw the lighter at his motherfucking ass for real. As soon as the flames done cooked up contact with him, the flames ignited the brew and the vodka. While the brew burned him, the bleach bleached his skin, and I ain't talking about chickens and gravy. Jeff... 
let up a terrible screech as he caught on fire, yo. Dude tried to roll on the fire, but it was no use. The brew had done cooked up his ass in a strutting inferno, yo. Dude ran down the hall and fell down the stairs, and y'all start beatboxing as they saw Jeff, now on play of, now a play on fire, drop to the ground. Nearly dead as fucking fried chicken. The last motherfucking thing Jeff saw was his crazy ass mother was his crazy ass mother. The other motherfuckers. The other motherfuckers trying to extinguish the flames. So he passed out. And Jeff woke his cold ass up. A little cast wrapped around his wild little grill, yo. Dude couldn't peep anything, yo. But he felt a cold ass little cast on his shoulder. And stitches all over his body, yo. Dude tried to stand up, yo, but he realized that there was some tube up in his thugged out arm. And he tried to get it off for reals, and nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet. Her ass hollered at his ass, put his ass back into the bed, reinserted the tube. Jeff sat there, with no vision, no idea what the fuck his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his crazy ass mama. Honey, is you all right? She asked. Jeff couldn't answer though. His wild little grill was covered. And he was unable to speak. Oh, honey. I have pimped out Shizzle for real. After all witnesses busted some lyrics to the 5 0, Randy confessed a trying to battle you. They decided to let Lou go. This done cooked up Jeff. Almost bolted up, stopped halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his thugged out arm. Dude, about to be up by tomorrow. Then you two gonna be able to be together again. Jeff's mother hugs Jeff, says a fat bias. The next couple weeks was where Jeff was hit up by his wild little family. They came, then came the dizzle where the bandages was removed. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. His gang was all there to peep it. What the fuck he would look like for reals. As the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's grill, everyone was on the edge of their seat. They waited until the last bend and holding the cover on his face was almost removed. Let's hope for the best, howled the doctor. Dude quickly pulled the cloth, letting the rest fall down Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screamed all up in the sight of his wild little face. Lou and Jeff's dad stare, awestruck at his wild little face. What, bitch? Oh, what happened to my face? Jeff hollered. Dude rushed out of bed and ran to the bathroom, yo. Dude looked up in the mirror and saw the cause of the distress, yo. His face. It, it's horrible, yo. His lips was burnt to a thugged out deep shade of red. And his grill was turned the fuck into a pure white color. His afro singed from brown to black, yo. Dude slowly put his hands to his wild little face. Had a sort of leathery feel to it now, yo. Dude looked back at his wild little gang. Then back up to the mirror. Jeff, hollered Lou. It ain't nothing, but not that bad. Not that bad, hollered Jeff. It ain't nothing but perfect. His gang was equally surprised. Y'all know that shit. Jeff started busting up uncontrollably. His... Mother father's noticed his mother father's noticed that his fucking left eye and hand was twitching. Uh Jeff, is you alright? Okay, bitch. I never felt more alright, motherfucker. <laughs> Peep my dirty ass. This grill goes perfect with me. Dude couldn't quit busting up, yo. Dude just stroked his wild little grill, feeling that shit. Looking at Looking at it up in the mirror, what caused this bitch? Well, you may recall that when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his crazy ass mind, his sanity snapped. Y'all know that shit, motherfucker. And now he was left as a cold ass little crazy ass capping machine. That is, his thugged out little motherfathers didn't give a fuck. Doctor, hollered Jeff's mom. Is my son I? You know, you know what I mean? In the head? Oh yes, this behavior is typical for, for patients that have taken straight up big ass amounts of painkillers. 
if his behavior doesn't chisel up in a gangbang few weeks, bring his ass back here. We'll give his ass a psychological test. Oh, fuck you, doctor. Jeff's mother went over to where Jeff... Jeff, sweetie? It ain't nothing but time to go. Jeff looks away from the mirror. His wild little grill still formed the fuck back into a cold-ass little crazy-ass smile. Okay, mommy. <laughs> his crazy-ass mother took his ass by the shoulder and took his ass to get his clothes. This is what the fuck came in. Hollered the lady all up at the front desk. Jeff's mama looked down to peep the black dress baggy-ass pants and white hoodie that her little hustler wore. Now they were clean and shit for now, stitched together. Jeff's mother led his ass to his banging room and then cooked up his ass, put his threads on. I ain't talking about chickens and gravy, bitch. They, they all left, not knowing that this was the final dizzle of their lives. Later that night, Jeff's mother woke up to the sound coming from the bathroom. Sounded as if some motherfucker was busting up. Right back in your motherfucking ass. Bitch slowly strutted over to peep what the fuck it was. When her ass looked the fuck into the bathroom, her ass saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife, curled a smile fuck into his cheeks. Jeff, what the fuck is you busting? Asked his crazy ass mother. Jeff looked over at his crazy ass mother. I couldn't keep smiling, mommy. It, it hurt after a while. Now, I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed that his wild little fucking eyes ringed up in black. Jeff, you're wise. His eyes seemed never closing. I couldn't peep my face. I got chillaxed and my eyes started to close. I burnt up the eyelids so I could forever peep my dirty ass. My freshly smoked up face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back up, seeing that her little hustler was going insane. What's wrong, mommy? Aren't I dope? Yes, son. Her ass hollered. Y yes, your ass is. Let me go get your crazy ass daddy so he can peep your face. The bitch ran the fuck back to the room and shit, and Jeff's dad and shook Jeff's dad from his chill. Honey, honey, get the clock. We. Bitch stopped. As her ass saw Jeff up in the doorway, holding a knife. Mommy. You lied. You lied. That's the last motherfucking thing that they heard before Jeff rushed him with a knife, gutting both of them. His brother Lou woke up, startled by some noise, yo. Dude didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his wild little fucking eyes and tried to go back to chill for real. Sue was on the border of slumber. He got the strangest feeling that some motherfucker was watching his ass, yo. Dude looked up. Before Jeff's hand covered his crazy ass grill, yo, dude slowly raised the knife, locked and loaded to plunge the fuck into Lou for real. Lou thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh. Jeff hollered. Just go to chill.